All right, guys, here's our project for today. I got this Lennox unit here, 12 and a half ton package unit. And the issue has been over the summertime, we have been out here multiple times gassing this unit up. I've had two guys here on separate occasions leak check this system, and we have yet to find a leak. So I am here today to do more of a uh, in-depth leak check, I suppose. So first things first, I am just going to add in nitrogen on top of the already existing refrigerant charge rather than reclaiming the charge on both circuits, adding nitrogen and then adding a little bit of tracer gas. Like I said, I'm just gonna add nitrogen right on top of the gas that's already in there. All right, I went a little bit overboard. I'm at 275 PSI, which should still be fine. I was shooting for 220, but I didn't set my regulator properly. Anyway, I'm gonna disconnect these hoses so I can leave the system isolated when I check circuit one. And right now I got my recovery tank being pulled into a vacuum just to make the uh, recovery process a little bit easier the first time around. So, let's get our hoses off here. Normally I have a quick release on this side, but as you can tell, I didn't have one on that one. Let's get to sniffing. Now we're gonna come back to that one. There may be some residual refrigerant left around that stem just from pulling the hoses off. And I'm getting a pretty high hit, about seven. Yeah, that may be our leak right there. Now I have yet to see this in real life, but I think NorCal Dave had it on a video one time where a pressure switch, just like the one I'm checking right now, cracked internally and was actually leaking refrigerant through the wires and he was able to check over here at the wire connections and he actually got a hit on his uh, leak detector. Now I've never seen that in real life but that would be amazing to see in real life. Just something to keep in mind when you guys are leak checking stuff all right. That's a tip from your buddy NorCal Dave. Not getting anything around my... Over the years, I've found leaks all over these distribution tubes. Only because they're, they're always touching each other, rubbing up on stuff they shouldn't be rubbing up on. Like right back there. Oh, no, there's a space back there. This line right here. Now in my experience, when these microchannel coils leak, it's usually over here at the header, or what I call a header. I don't know if that's technically what it's called. And nothing over there. Check over here on this side. And again, there's no oil stains or anything on this microchannel coil, so I don't suspect this coil is leaking. I think what I'm gonna do now is just spray some bubbles on these Schrader cores and see if we can verify an actual leak or if we're just sensing residual refrigerant in there. I'm getting no bubbles coming out of there. Uh, I don't really, well, I 
actually. Now, it's probably hard to see because it's so bright out here, guys. But it doesn't appear to be any growing bubbles around this stem or on this stem. So I think whatever I was sensing initially was just a little bit of refrigerant left behind when I pulled the hoses off. I've seen, too, where this elbow will crack right at that stress point when it was when it was bent but and usually when it cracks right there it's just the tiniest little like a hairline crack but I got nothing right there but I have about 250 pounds of pressure inside of circuit number two my sniffers going Got a small hit on that Schrader port. Probably get one on this one too once I get in there. Yeah. I'm gonna obviously verify that with bubbles, but we're probably just dealing with a little bit of residual refrigerant, refrigerant oil from when I disconnected my hoses. Now, it might look like I'm just randomly sweeping this, but there is somewhat uh, strategy to this madness. I'm just trying to go around the uh, solder point of all these elbows. Usually that's where they leak from. I've had a few that have leaked actually at the elbow itself, but most of the time they'll just they'll leak around the solder joint, the braze joint. Now with these evaporators, I just kind of go in a Z pattern. I mean, it's more or less, I'm just randomly sweeping this because I have no other way to do it. All right, this is getting to be pretty anticlimactic. I haven't found a leak. None of these seem to be leaking. None of these Schrader cores that I just sniffed with my electronic leak detector and got a hit none of these actually confirm a leak with bubbles so so far i cannot verify a leak anywhere which is the same issue the other guys were having over the summertime another thing i like to do when checking for leaks especially with bubbles is i'll sort of move the tubing just a little bit i have had leaks in the past where it's just a, a tiny little hairline crack hairline leak somewhere and the way the copper sits you might not detect it. You move the copper, move the tubing, all of a sudden you hear a pssst, or you see a bunch of bubbles start shooting out of, uh, out of the joint or whatever is leaking. So I'm not saying go around and start bending all the tubing and everything, but just push on it a little bit. And again, you'll notice the bubbles are moving, but they're not reproducing, they're not getting bigger. So without further ado, and now remember, this tank is under a vacuum, so. It also helps when you open the tank up or you shut off on high pressure like you just seen. All right guys, here's where we're at. I got the nitrogen refrigerant combination recovered out of circuit number one and circuit number two. Circuit number one has been under a vacuum for about 15 minutes now. We're at, let's see if I can get it to show up on camera, 340 microns. And again, my micron gauge is at the lowest point of my system because my low side is valved off right here. So I'm pulling in through my gauges, which I know are somewhat of a restriction, going through my high side into the system. And so I'm sensing on my low side. So 
So, let's get a decay test. All right, right now, if you can tell over there on the vacuum pump, I'm valved off right there. So my micron gauge is isolated. It's sensing just, just the sealed system right now. And it looks like we're holding strong at 340. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to slide my vacuum pump over to circuit number one. I'm going to start pulling a vacuum on that system. And I'm just going to let this one sit here and see if we get any rise out of that 340 microns. Looks like we passed our decay test. Our micron level actually went down by 10 to 330 as you can see. Now, to what I understand, the reason behind that is because my micron gauge is of course at the lowest point in the system and my vacuum pump was pulling at the highest point. So I believe once the vacuum pump was turned off and my system was isolated, the vacuum sort of equalized. And it was actually a little bit of a lower micron level than we were initially sensing. That's just how I understand it in my brain. So anyway, I'm going to pop this micron gauge off, put it over on circuit number one, and let that pull a vacuum while I charge this side up. Not sure how well you can see that, but we're just finishing our charge here. I did have to turn the unit on and put it in test mode so I could uh, meter in the rest of the refrigerant through the low side. So we're looking for seven pounds, four ounces, and we're there. So let's shut that off. Seven pounds, four ounces. All right, guys, let's do our second decay test. Circuit number two is down to 300 microns. And again, I got the same setup. This side is valved off right here. So I'm sucking through the high side and that makes my micron gauge at the lowest point of the system. Shut this valve off, turn our pump off. No initial rise. So let's let that sit there for a few minutes and see what happens. Here's what we're looking at guys. Circuit number one, 36 degree evaporator. Condensing temperature is about 87. It's about 65 degrees out today. Maybe a little bit cooler, but uh, sun's starting to come out, so it's probably gonna warm up a little bit. But anyway, our condensing temperature is pretty close to the 28 to 25 degree rule of thumb that I use for micro channels. Our evaporator temperature is a little low, but our return air is only 72 degrees. So there's not a huge, huge load on that evaporator because it was pretty cool this morning. Try to get you a decent view of these gauges. Here we go. Uh, circuit number two is about a 38 degree evaporator. Condensing temperature looks like it's about 90, maybe 88, 86, 88 degrees. So we're about, op we're about the same as uh, circuit number one. Our return air is 72, like I said. Discharge air temperature is 70. Or excuse me, return air is 73 now. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can get a decent clear picture of that. All right, you can kind of see it right there. Return air is 73, discharge air is 49. All right, guys, well, that'll do it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I know there wasn't a whole lot of instant gratification from finding any sort of giant leaks in the system like I was hoping anyway. Um, but I did get a little bit of a, a hit around two of those Schrader ports, which I changed out. So I'm going to chalk this up to uh, leaky Schrader cores, I suppose. Even though I didn't or wasn't able to confirm that with bubbles, that is the only leak I found in the entire system. And both, cir both circuits did pass the decay test. And they were, they were down around three, 300 microns and 330 microns on the other side. So if there was um, a leak after I changed out those Schrader cores, then I'm pretty sure I wouldn't pass the, de the decay test. However, who knows? I could have the slightest little tiny fraction of a width of a hair leak somewhere in the system that um, 
I'm just not able to detect. Maybe a, a tiny little leak that only leaks out under higher pressure, something on the high side possibly. So if there is, I'm sure we'll get a call in the summertime and we'll have to revisit this situation. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. There was a, a few little nuggets of information some of you newer guys might be able to use. For now, guys, that'll do it. I'll see you on the next one, all right? Go ahead and uh, hit that like button for me, will you? And subscribe while you're at it, all right? We'll see you on the next one.